Hey, how's it going guys? My name's Daniel, aka Hashlips, and welcome back to my channel where I teach you how to code. In today's video, I'm going to be showing you how to create a simple contract on Solidity with Remix. And the reason for this is so that we can get used to coding smart contracts on the Ethereum blockchain other than NFTs. We can do something with a basic utility such as a ticketing system. <laughs> If at any point you are struggling with the code, please go ahead and go to the hashlips.online website where you can find our Discord server. The Discord server consists of a lot of family members of the Hashlip community along with devs that will help you out with your problems. To follow along with this tutorial, we're simply going to go to remix.ethereum.org which is a great online Solidity compiler. This purpose of this program is to take the code that we write and compile it into bytecode. Remix is a great playground for experimenting with Ethereum-based Solidity contracts, and that's why we're going to be using it. It looks like this when you enter the application, and here on the top left we can create a new workspace. Once we have that, you'll get the three default files, storage, owner, and pallet, and they are fine. You don't have to do anything with them, we are going to actually right click on the contract folder and create our own smart contract. I'm going to call my smart contract ticket.sol. You have to add the .sol extension standing for Solidity Code, right? So that the compiler knows what this file is. Next, I need to explain what we are going to create. So in order for us to understand Solidity better and smart contracts, I think it's a great opportunity for us to maybe create a small program or a contract, if we have to put it like that, that governs the sales of tickets and using them. So we're going to create a smart contract that is kind of like a ticketing system where people can buy a ticket and then use it. As always, starting any smart contract, you have to provide a license. Now, if I jump to the ballot.sol example, we can see that this license uses the GPL uh, 3.0. We can go and copy and paste that in our contract, but I would like to make our license MIT. That is fine for now. Then to specify what compiler we need to use to compile our code, we have to write um, pragma, solidity, and then what version of solidity we would like to use. I would like to use 0.8.0 and upwards for now. And that's it. Now we can start our contract. So we can write the word contract, and give it a name. I'm just going to keep it simple and call it ticket um, for the contract name, open my curly braces, and we are ready. We have to remember to add our semicolon here at the end, otherwise it's going to moan. Now we are good. Perfect. So we are doing this on the fly, so we'll just come up with concepts as we go along. I know for a fact if we want to say sell a ticket, basically, a buy and sell a ticket, we need some kind of way of storing who owns what ticket. A great mechanism for that is using a mapping. Keep in mind that we might as well have used an ERC20 token and used it as a ticket. But that is boring and we want to create something new from scratch and also it's a bit bulky for our use case. So let's create our storage mechanism which we are going to use a mapping for. Our mapping is going to be a mapping from address to uint. And then we're going to call this ticket, uh, maybe ticket holders, like so. This ticket holders I'm going to specify as being public, just so that we can test with it when we run our program. Now, when we go to the deploy and transaction section, what we can see is there's our ticket contract. I'm going to deploy it just to show you that we now have our public variable. When you define something as public on Solidity, it automatically creates for you a getter function, meaning that we can enter an address and we can get the value back here. Obviously, nothing would be in here um, as of yet, so what we need to do now is create a function for adding tickets and subtracting them. Let's now create two different functions. The one is going to be add ticket and the other is going to be subtract ticket. These are going to be internal functions. So what do I mean by that? 
Well, we're going to give it a name and we need to give it some um, signatures like this. Then we're going to define this as internal. When you do define something as internal, it means that only this um, contract will be able to make use of it. It doesn't need to be accessible from the outside world because the thing is, we would create a helper function such as buy a ticket or use a ticket and these will use our internal functions. The reason why you want to separate functions like this is so that you can keep your code nice and concise. Even though this function will not be callable from the outside world, it is however callable from contracts that derive from this contract. So it's just a way to make a function protected and it's nice convention to follow. We are not done yet because adding a ticket, we probably need two parameters. We will need an address. So let's create an address and we'll call this the user. And then we will need the amount. So the amount would be a UN256, like so. So we need the user's address and the amount of tickets that's going to be allocated to this user. Let's define the workings of this function. In essence, all we need to do is pull out the actual user now or point to the user that's in our ticket holders mapping and basically add the tickets. So this user might already have tickets. So we need to kind of say that this will be the ticket holders amount, right? Plus the new amount. So that's how you can specify it. Once we have this, we know that we can confidently add more tickets to a user. Later on, we can specify some logic to say that a user is only to allowed to have one ticket. But for now, we will pretend that a user can buy as many tickets as they want. Like I said, now we need to create the public facing function. So we're going to create a new function and this time I'm going to specify and call this as buy tickets. Now, by doing this, I realized that a better function name for the add tickets would be add tickets, plural, not singular. And there we go. It's going to take in the exact same amount of parameters over there, this time making it public and we can just do this and we might do some access control at some stage. But uh, for now, all we need to do is call add our tickets like so. And then we need to pass in the user and the amount and that's it. Now we can go ahead and we probably need to make this. Uh, oh, I got an extra bracket in there and we can probably test this out. So let's go ahead and redeploy and test our contract. So let's redeploy our contract, removing the old one and click on deploy. Now we can see we've got basically two functions and our ticket holder variable. So the buy tickets, not the add tickets because that's internal, only the buy. So let's go ahead and select this user. I'm going to copy his address or her address and then I'm going to put it in there and I'm going to say give me 12 tickets. I'm going to click on transact and it went through successfully and this time if I query how many tickets this person have then we can see it is 12. And how cool is that? So now we've got 12. Let's add another 20 tickets or 20 tickets. We query it again and we see this person now has 32 tickets. Like I mentioned, we are also going to need a subtract ticket function. So let's go and define a function subtract ticket. We might as well just copy our add ticket function and call it sub ticket. And um, this time it's also going to take in the user and the amount. But before we subtract the tickets, we need to basically um, do some logic with it first, right? So we need to kind of do this where we kind of subtract the amount from our tickets. And then we need to remember to add a require statement. Now this is added functionality or added checks to make sure that the user indeed has enough tickets in order for us to subtract it. So how we can check it is basically saying that the user's amount, right? Because specifying like this gets the amount from a mapping needs to be greater or equal than the amount of tickets that we want to subtract. If this is not the case and if this statement fails, we can leave a little message. So we can maybe say 
uh, you do not have enough tickets. Perfect. Like before, this time we're also going to have a new function and this time we're going to call it use ticket. So let's say use ticket and it's going to take the exact same parameters, but we're going to point to our sub tickets function. And that's why we made two separate functions. In the add ticket and subtract tickets functions, we specify most of the logic that has to do with security. Whereas the buy ticket and use ticket functions are purely there to be seen as pass throughs. Go ahead and deploy this contract again to test it out. We're going to start off by copying this address at the top so that we can buy some tickets. Let's say we want to buy 10 for this user. We're going to buy it and verify that this user indeed has 10 tickets. Then we want to use some. But let's say we want to use 20 tickets, which we don't have. If I say use tickets, it's going to break and tell me you do not have enough tickets. If I only want to use five of them transact, it will go through successfully. And we can see that the holder now is only five. Let's use maybe one. See, we have now four. And if we want to use all four transact, we can see we have zero. So if we try and transact again, we will break and say, you do not have enough tickets, which is absolutely true. This application or smart contract works as intended. The only thing that we might need to add is maybe a price. So we can say that we need a ticket price and we're going to equal it to 1.1 ether like so. And then we can actually ask someone to pay this amount of ether before we allow them to buy tickets. So how we can do that is by changing this function, the buy function into a payable. Then we can add a require statement down here. We can simply check that the message dot value like so is greater or equal to the price. So the ticket price times the amount. And only if that's the case, then we will award people tickets. Whenever you're dealing with money coming into your contract, it is a very good idea to maybe have a withdraw function. Without a withdraw function, it would be very hard or almost impossible to get that ether out again. So for withdrawal, we're going to say this is going to be public and we need to say that only the owner can call this. So let's go ahead and specify a new address and call this owner. Now that we have this, we're not going to specify who the owner is immediately. We are going to have a constructor function and in here set the message.sender like so is going to be, well, the owner is going to be equal to the message.sender like so. This from the get go sets the message.sender's address as our owner. All that's left to make it nice and secure is to put a require statement saying that the message like so dot sender needs to be equal to our owner's address. Basically, it needs to be the owner. And then we can put a nice message saying you are not the owner like so. If this fails after this has passed, we can basically go ahead and now send the ether. So let's go down here and say, we need something that's payable. We're going to type cost something into payable. We're going to cast the owner's address. Then we're going to say, let's use the call functionality and put our curly braces. We're going to pass a value. The value that we want to pass is this addresses balance. So I'm going to type cast the address of this and the, this keyword means this contract. So the address of this contract balance like so. And we need to specify that at the very end. Now the call function basically returns to us a Boolean value, which we can extract. So I'm going to call this Boolean success and omit the second returned value. And then once I've done that, I'm going to just require that this was successful here at the bottom. Now that that's done, we have our withdraw method set up 
and we know that only the owner can withdraw the money. So let's go and test it out for a final test. We can go to the deploy and transaction section, clear out the previous deployments and redeploy this contract. Here it is. We can immediately see that this red button now means that buying tickets is actually payable and we need to specify the right amount. So let's go and try and just buy a ticket like before. I'm going to copy this address, but actually let's try a different account, seeing that the top one is the owner. I'm going to try this account, copy the address and say that I want to buy for myself 10 tickets. We're going to transact and it's going to fail. And the reason why it fails and we haven't put it there, but the reason is because the amount is not enough. So let's go and specify an amount. And I'm just going to put an absurd amount in here just to make sure it does go through. So I'm going to put that and say transact. And indeed it does. So now if I paste my address here in the ticket holders, I can see I've got 10 tickets. I can go ahead and still use it like before. So let's say I want to use three tickets. I can see I now only have seven left. Now that the ETH is in the contract, let's click on the withdraw button. And oops, you are not the owner. And that is correct. I am not the owner and I cannot withdraw the ether. But if we go to the owner's address and we can see that the owner has 99.9 .9 ether and he calls the withdrawal, it goes through and puts the ether in his account. That is how simple it is to make a ticketing system contract. Now, this is very basic and minimal and it's purely there for educational purposes to teach you how to code on Solidity. I hope you enjoyed it and please remember never to just use my tutorial code and publish it on the blockchain. Please review it yourself. Then, that being said, leave me a comment in the description what you want to see next, me coding and teaching you guys. Also leave a thumbs up and subscribe if you want to see more awesome content. Till later, see you in the next video.